What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining me for another review here on my channel. Today we are talking about the Skywatcher CQ350 German Equatorial Mount. This sits between the EQ6 and the EQ8, so this is kind of like an EQ7 is what the class of mount that we're talking about here. So let's get right on into it and see what makes the CQ350 so special in today's world. Before we get into this review, I want to say thank you so much. We have passed 4,000 subscribers here on my channel. I am so grateful for each and every single one of you. And there is obviously a ton more in the future for astrophotography and for reviews going forward. So I hope you'll stick around. I hope that we can continue to build this channel together and share my love for the night sky with you just the same way. Now today we are talking about the CQ350 German Equatorial Mount from Skywatcher. This replaced my CEM40 mount that I've been using for several years for astro imaging. Now this mount is a far larger payload bump than the CEM40. That one only was able to handle 40 pounds. But with all my imaging gear, I've exceeded 30 pounds, closer to 40 pounds sometimes, uh, with all the heavy guide scopes and the cameras and all the extra accessories. I was actually maxing out that mount and kind of getting a slight performance decrease by having such a heavy payload on there. So I decided to upgrade to something a little bit more substantial. This mount here boasts a 77 pound payload capacity, so that is big enough to handle a C11 with cameras, a Mead 12 with cameras, a C14 with cameras. I mean, you can load a lot of stuff on this mount at 77 pounds. And you can also get one of those really big Ascar 180 refractors and put on here with all of your imaging equipment and still probably have close to 25 pounds or so to payload and you'll be just fine. Now this mount is an astrophotographer's dream in a way. It's got all the ports you could desire. It's got everything that you need to run all of your cable management systems and just really have a really easy user-friendly experience out when you're doing your astrophotography. This mount features USB and power outputs right up here at the front. You've got auxiliary on each side of the dovetail, which is really, really cool. And you've got a lot of power inputs. So you've got your main 12 volt supply here which is threaded on just like the CGX and the older Atlas Pro that I've had. This is the signature Orion Skywatcher threaded power cable and adapter. Now on the side here you do have a USB hub. You do have to power this USB hub though if you want it to perform correctly. A lot of people have reported that using that USB hub there, it does disconnect if you're using USB 3 high-speed cables. USB 2 is fine, but the minute you go to USB 3 for your ZWO cameras or your UHY cameras or things like that, it will more than likely drop the connection because it just doesn't have enough power. It's really kind of strange that Skywatcher couldn't just build in a higher amperage into this thing and allow it to just draw more power from your battery source because you have your main power cable plugged into the front here, but you've got to run a separate power cable into the side of the mount here to power your USB ports and your 12 volt out ports. And I don't know why they didn't do what Ioptron does, where you just have one main power supply and it powers everything on the mount for you. Now this mount looks like an absolute beast to transport around. And even though it is such a large mount, it's really not that hard and it's actually fairly portable. But what's really crazy is the tripod weighs more than the mount head itself does, which is kind of funny. The tripod is a massive three inch tripod, very similar to the CGXL tripod on that mount that I reviewed a little while back. And a lot of you probably have seen in the field. So the same size tripod, they're big legs on them. That tripod weighs 35 pounds for this mount. And the mount head itself actually only weighs 33 pounds. So even though it's just a little bit lighter, it's just interesting that the mount itself is lighter than the tripod. Now the mount is 
quite a bit lighter than something like the CGX. The CGX is quite a brute. This one being a center balance mount, very similar to Ioptron's CEM lineup. This one actually folds up kind of nice and small if you wanted to move the latitude adjustment and kind of fold it in on itself to make it a smaller profile. You can easily put this in a hard case and rock and roll. Now this mount does not have a polar scope included inside of it. You will have to use an electronic method such as the ASI Air or Sharp Cap or if you buy an iPolar, if you get a Pole Master, one of those type things, you'll have to use those unfortunately. But a lot of people are able to do their own version of the Celestron All Sky Polar Alignment. Skywatcher has their own equivalent built into the hand pad that you can utilize to successfully polar align this as well. Speaking of, this does use just the standard SynScan hand controller with USB interface on the bottom that we all have grown to know and love. Even though hand pads are starting to become sort of outdated, it is still nice to have the traditional hand pad if you want to do visual observing or if something obviously goes wrong and you need to go back to square one and sort it out. They also don't advertise little things like auto home position that something like the CGX has built into it. This mount is a breeze to do polar alignment with, with the big hand knobs you have on the altitude and the azimuth axis, especially the one back here on the altitude axis. It is a massive, probably two and a half inch is my guess. It is a big circular dial, and it really helps that you have the up and down indicators built on it so that you can know when you're trying to polar align which way you need to go in the dark really quick. But in the winter time, when you're using this mount, it is really easy because you can do all your your polar alignment with your gloves on and not have to worry about freezing your hands off trying to polar align this thing in the cold. In the box you do get two 22 pound counterweights. They are very very big counterweights. They are the same type counterweights you get with the CGXL with the big large hand knobs on them. The only thing I will say about the counterweights is I'm not really a fan of is that the counterweights themselves have the little rubber tips on the inside of the screw which is great for not scratching up your counterweight bar here. But the problem is, is that you have to torque them really hard because with that rubber silicone tip to it, the counterweight will slowly slide down the counterweight shaft if you're not paying attention or if they're not tight enough. So you have to really make sure that your counterweights are tight on this mount. The counterweight shaft is adjustable. You can loosen the two screws on the side and do two different angles for the counterweight bar so you get better leverage on certain altitudes if you need it. That would be my only thing is that I don't really like having the counterweight bar attached by screws, but it is what it is. It's just it's a small problem to have when you're out in the field. I just carry a set of Allen wrenches with me in its hard case just to make sure that I have the right tools to set this up every night. One thing I'm a really huge fan of with this mount is actually the clutch mechanisms here. So it's got this little knurled edge and you have to lift it up and twist it to the left to unlock the spring load that's there. And now when this is raised up, you can then take the knob and turn it down so you can move the axis now for counterbalance. Now inside the CQ350 are spring-loaded worm gears that help reduce backlash, but better yet, they have stepper motors inside, which stepper motors are better than the traditional servo motors because stepper motors don't have any of the reduction gears on the inside, so they are almost backlash-free motors. And when you couple that with a belt drive, that even further brings down the backlash in the system. And then when you create a spring-loaded worm gear, that puts proper tension on the mesh between the main gear and the worm at all times with the spring-loaded mechanism, that makes the Skywatcher CQ350 almost free of all backlash, and that is perfect for astrophotography. I've had a really great time learning the Skywatcher CQ350 and all of its little quirks along the way. Besides the few little complaints about the USB hub and the counterweight bar attaching by screws instead of just a thread-on design, there really isn't a whole lot about this mount that I don't really like. I've had it out a bunch of different nights. It has guided almost 
flawlessly. I've never dropped a single frame. All of the stars have been completely round and delivered amazing performance on several nights in a row of astro imaging to produce a really nice photo of the Leo triplet. So I'm really happy that this mount is really exceeding my needs in the astrophotography goal. If you're interested in picking up this mount, you can get it anywhere pretty much around the world. This is a readily available mount. If you're in the United States, this mount will set you back a whopping $4,300 US dollars right now. They do go on sale quite often, and they do obviously sell it with just the mount head if you have an observatory and you just want to buy the mount head. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my review today on the Skywatcher CQ350. I'll see you next time in the next video. Clear skies to you all.